Hey guys, Jocelyn here with Fantasia Elegance. I've got another wire wraps jewelry tutorial for you. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to make this very elegant and cute hummingbird design. This one is a little bit more intermediate and level than some of my other tutorials are. So if you're very new to wire wrapping, I would recommend you check out some of the easier ones on my channel. But as always, I will try to break this down and make it as simple and easy to follow as possible. And real quick as we get started, I will be following this uh, template that I created for this tutorial. This will be available to download on my Etsy shop. I will leave a link for where you can get this uh, in the description section below. You might need to click see more if you're on a computer or if you're on a smartphone to expand that description section and get the link you might need to click there's a little kind of a gray arrow triangle icon just to the right of the video title. This isn't strictly necessary for this tutorial it just makes it a lot easier to follow along and takes out a lot of the guesswork for you. As far as wire goes, we're just going to be using 20 gauge round dead soft and 28 gauge round dead soft. You can use any kind of wire you like. I do recommend for this design, since we're going to be hammering it out so much, that you pick some kind of solid wire like copper, brass, or sterling silver instead of something plated or coated because those, as we hammer them, could get messed up. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is make this kind of frame for the hummingbird. So go ahead and pull out your 20 gauge wire. And we're going to straighten that on out so that we can cut a nice long piece. And you're going to want a 14 inch piece for this one. So I'm going to do 12 and then add on two more there. So 14 inches. And we're going to start working at this little swirl right here. So taking our round nose pliers, we're just going to start putting an open spiral in here. This is going to go inside the hummingbird's wing. And as you go, you want to be comparing this to your template to make sure you're getting it the right shape and size. And once we've got that spiral in, we're going to just curl this wire around in a little arch shape so that it goes back around and meets the top of that little swirl. And again, just comparing that we're keeping everything matching our template. That will save you a lot of tweaking later. That looks pretty good. And now we're going to form the top of the wing. To do that, I'm just going to put a little bit of a bend in this wire coming off of that shape we just made. And we're going to start looping it back around over itself. I'm actually going to take this tail underneath as I form a little teardrop shape at the very tip of the wing. Just like that, and again adjusting this as needed so that it matches your template. Alright, so at this point we're going to start forming some of these feather shapes, and this bit can be a little bit tricky because what we want to do is wrap this tail so that it goes over this swirly bit that we shaped right here, to kind of hold everything together. So I'm going to put a little bend in and bring this wire back towards the swirl, and I want this leg here to be running parallel, roughly parallel, to that upper leg of the wing right there. And then right where it meets that swirl, I want to feed this tail down through that space and back around. So I'm just going to take the end here, taking the end of our wire, I'm going to put it down through there, pulling it all the way through, Okay, and then again, right where this longer tail wire crosses over that swirl, I'm just going to grip with my tweezer nose pliers here and start bending this tail back the way we came so that it sits directly behind this little straight section here. Okay, so we've got that going, and then I'm just going to grab on top of there and gently pinch it down that I'm kind of sealing it right there around that little swirl portion. All right, and again, we want this wire going directly behind the other one so that it's kind of hidden. They're stacked on top of each other. Okay, so we should have something like that now, and we're just going to do that same thing, bringing this tail down to form another feather kind of shape. I want a sharper bend right there, so I'm just going to encourage that with my tweezer nose pliers. There we go. And again, taking this 
so that it goes parallel to both of these lines we've got here. And then as before, we're going to feed this tail down through this space here so that we can wrap it all the way back around on itself. Okay, and right where it crosses over that wire, again, we'll bend it back so that we're kind of retracking our steps there. And as before, we'll just pinch that on down and to make sure this wire is running right behind and parallel with everything. Okay, so we've got two of our little feathers in there. Let's go ahead and do another one. Let's just double check how we're doing on our template here. Looks pretty good, and it doesn't have to be exactly the same as the template, just as close as you can get it, right? And once again, we're going to feed this tail down through that space. And this will be the last time we have to do this kind of fiddly situation. There we go. And one last time, we're just going to bend this tail all around there. Goes back on itself. Okay, and one last time we will form another feather shape here. And this one, the bottom of the feather, as you're bringing it around, you want it to touch the bottom of this little part of the wing that we made there. So you want those two points to meet. And let's double check how that's looking. Okay, so I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. And then right where it's meeting here, we're going to put a little bend in. So bringing it back around. Just like that. At this point, once again, taking our template out. We're just going to start following the template all the way around for shaping our wire. So I just like to compare it to the template, make a few tweaks, compare it again. Okay, so now we can form the tail shape. And any point at which you get to a really sharp curve, like right here between these two tail feathers, the way we're going to do that is just kind of mark the point with our tweezer nose or chain nose pliers, and then bend it all the way around on itself, just like that. And then you can pinch it on down with a really tight little crimp, just like that. And then just open it back up a little bit with your round nose pliers. And you might need to adjust after doing that. I didn't need to open it up quite that much. And again, just going back to shaping it on around and matching it to the template. Okay, so here we've reached another point where we need one of those sharp little bends. So again, I'm just going to mark my tweezer nose pliers where that needs to happen. Turn the wire all the way around and then crimp it down on itself. Just like that. And then we'll continue on. We're now forming the kind of belly of the hummingbird. All right, and then same deal for the beak. Just holding it on the template so that you can mark where you need to make this little bend. And for this one, right at the tip, instead of bending the wires so they're side by side, I'm going to take the tail behind like that so that they're 
kind of on top of each other instead of being side by side. And then I'm going to put the little crimp in, just squeezing those wires on down. And hummingbirds' beaks, of course, are very narrow, so I'm going to squeeze these wires a little closer to each other. And they also curve down a bit at the tip, so I'm going to put that in as well, just a really subtle little downward curve there. That will help make your hummingbird a little bit more realistic looking. Okay, and then continuing on, we will shape the head. So using my template to know where to bend that wire up for the head. And we're just going to put a gentle little swoop in there. Alright, and your wire should come back around and meet our starting point with the swirl there. We're just going to put a little swirl on this end, kind of right below the wing location. So I'm going to put a large open spiral in there. And just double check that you're getting it placed where it should be on your template. I'm going to make this a little bigger than it says on the template right now because we can always make this smaller later. But we want to make sure that in the final piece all the uh, wires can come together at their correct binding places without any empty points where they don't touch each other. So I'm just going to make this swirl a little bigger. Alright, so that is our base frame for this hummingbird. It should be looking a bit more like a bird now. At this point I'm going to pull out my steel bench block and I'm just going to gently hammer this out to flatten it, give it a bit more strength. And you don't want to hammer over these double layer wires here and at the beak because that will flatten them out and mess up your shape. So what I like to do is just splay this out ever so slightly um, so that you can get to the areas you do want to hammer. I'm going to focus on the tail feathers, its belly, its head, this little swirl right here, and then I'm going to very very carefully just with the edge of my hammer, get this top part of the wing and this little teardrop shape at the tip as well. Okay, so after the hammering, as you can see, it's gotten kind of misshaped and splayed out a little bit. So we're just going to take a second to try and fix that, um, kind of pushing everything back together again, reforming it how it's supposed to be. And you will want to use your uh, template to assist with this as well. Just making sure that we're still on track for being shaped correctly. And as you can see, mine, after hammering especially, doesn't really match the template perfectly. As long as you get all the main points, more or less, where the lines are going, that is the important part and you should be okay. So now we're going to start uh, connecting this all together. So go ahead and pull out your 28 gauge wire and we're going to start putting in a few bindings to hold things stable while we work on it. So I'm going to cut a couple lengths of this that are pretty short, maybe about two inches or so long. And we'll just cut uh, three pieces like that for now. So let's do one, two, three. And I'm just going to bend them all right in half. Set two of them aside, just take one for now. And we're going to connect this lower part of the wing to his back here. So I'm going to drop that little U-shape over both of those wires. Cross the tails and start wrapping it on around. And of course, pulling nice and tight with each pass. All right, once you've got, I don't know, five or six good passes there, I'm gonna trim the ends off on the back. Let's do one more with this tail here. There we go, and again, trimming that off on the back and make sure you tighten those ends down so they're not sticking out loose. All right, and now we're going to put another little binding point in right here, connecting those two spots. So take another of your little U-shaped 28 gauge pieces. We'll just drop it over both of them. And same deal as before, crossing the tails. 
start wrapping that nice and tight. And you could, of course, solder this instead of wrapping it. That would make it even more secure. But to make these tutorials a little bit more accessible, I just like to try and avoid soldering where possible. And again, once we have about five nice secure wraps, I'm going to snip off the ends on the back. And with our last one, we're going to connect this little swirl to the top part of the wing. So just going over both of those there. I'm going to push my wires a little closer to each other. There we go. And we'll just wrap that point as well. That is our base frame all completed. At this point we're going to cut and shape some pieces for the eyes and additional tail feathers. So once again taking your 20 gauge wire we're going to cut two different lengths of this. Now for the eye swirl you have two options. If you're going to be using a jeweler's torch to ball up the end you want to cut two and a half inches of wire for that. If you're going to be adding a bead on instead, you would want to cut two and a quarter inches. So I'm going to cut two and a half. And then we're also going to cut a second two and a half inch piece for that little tail feather embellishment. So I'm going to do both of those at once. Let's go ahead and do the eyes first. So if you're going to be balling this up with a torch, you will of course need some flux, which I've got here and you'll want something to hold your wire with that is insulated so you don't get burned on it. And this isn't really a tutorial on how to ball up a wire end, but you would just want to dip it in your flux, tap off the excess, and then you want to point your torch flame straight up at the wire. Let me raise this camera a little bit. So that you're pointing it um, straight up along the length of the wire, but you want to hold the wire vertically uh, so that the ball forms evenly. Okay, so something kind of like that. And then you would just chuck this in your pickle solution for 15 to 30 minutes. And this is what it would look like after you come out of your pickle with a little nice shiny ball on the end there. Now if you don't want to mess with that or you don't have a solder set up, you could very simply use a two and a half millimeter bead here. And what you would do is just put this on the end of your two and a half inch wire and you would spiral it around to encase your little bead. So just turning it all the way around, encasing it until you had something like that. But I really prefer how the soldered method looks, so we're gonna go ahead and use that. So basically we're going to start at our little balled up bit and form a spiral. And we're forming a spiral around the eye. And then we're going to put kind of a 90 degree angle in here and this will sit right at the base of the beak and then for the rest we're just going to do kind of a decorative little curve first one way and then end in a swirl going this way so using round nose pliers I'm just going to loop that all the way around here forming another open spiral And this one is going, this little spiral is going to sit right on top of that one that we formed earlier so that we have a connection point. So you can hold this over your shape that you've made, make sure everything is matching up. And you're going to connect this eyepiece with wraps here and here. So it needs to meet at both of those points. And then obviously I need to make this spiral a little bit smaller. So I'm going to snip off a little bit of wire. I have more than I need. And work on making that spiral a bit smaller. Alright, once we've got our, our uh, piece shaped here, we're going to hammer this out as well. And for this one, you just want to avoid hammering on that little balled up end that we made. Of course, if you have a bead on there, you would also want to avoid hammering on that. All right, and as before, once you hammer something, it does get a little bit deformed. So we just want to double check that it's going to sit in our spot where we want it to. 
Okay, so that's pretty close. Let's go ahead and cut some binding pieces from our 28 gauge wire once again. So again, just about two inch lengths, nothing too crazy. And for these, I'm going to cut four pieces. So one, two, three, and four. Just bend them all in half, set them aside. We'll take one, and I'm going to hold this piece where I want it to be. Again, you want that eye to be centered in the head portion. And we're going to wrap it to the base frame here and here on either side of the beak. So I'm just going to drop that over there and start wrapping it on around. And for this one, I like to put in maybe seven wraps or so, just a good amount to make sure that it's going to be nice and secure. And I'm just pinching all the wraps up so they're lying next to each other as well as I can. Okay, and as before, we'll just cut those ends off at the back. Okay, let's do the same thing below the beak. And once you have an equal number of wraps on the top and bottom, you can just trim off those ends and tighten things on down. All right, so now that we've got that front part of the face bit secured, we can refine this swirl here a little bit more so that it's sitting at all the connecting points we want. That looks pretty good. So here I'm actually gonna have this swirl that's connected to the eye bit lie on top of the frame wires instead of adjacent to them because I just think that looks a little bit better to have them kind of stacked there. So I'm going to bind both of those together right there. Okay and our final binding for this eyepiece swirl is going to be right over these two swirls where they meet each other. So we are making great headway. All we have left is this decorative little extra tail feather that we're going to add. So go ahead and pull out that other piece of two and a half inch 20 gauge wire that we cut earlier. And we're just going to form this little shape here as you can see on your template. So starting at one end, we're going to put a pretty small open spiral in. And then again, just following along on your template, we're going to make this little shape. So we're just going to hammer this out lightly, just like we've been doing with all the others, except this one's easy because there's no parts that you need to avoid hammering. So I'm just gonna flatten this out a little bit all over. And as always, after hammering, we want to double check that it still fits in our space. So I need to tighten these down just a little bit. So once you're happy with how your shape is sitting in that space, I'm pretty happy with it. We're going to do some final binding pieces. So as before, taking our 28 gauge wire, so we're going to cut five pieces, about in the two inch range. The two of them can probably be a little bit shorter. Okay, let's start with the shorter ones. These are probably about one and a half inches. It doesn't have to be exact. We'll just take one of those. And go ahead and place your piece on here so that your top swirl is touching there and there. Whoops, so your top swirl is touching there and there. And we're just going to drop that binding wire over, across the ends, and start wrapping it nice and tightly around. And as always, once you have enough wraps to secure it, we're going to snip off the ends on the back. Okay, let's put another binding in connecting these two swirls, the two larger ones. We'll just drop it over both of them. Okay, and then with these slightly longer pieces that we cut, again, I'm just going to uh, bend them all right in half to make little U-shapes. We're going to use these to connect the lower, for lower portion to the upper right here. Okay. And we'll just wrap those on around a bunch of times. And you want, of course, all your wraps to be sitting right next to each other. Alright, so we've basically wrapped 
that whole distance there. Make sure you deal with your ends on the back. And we're just going to do the same thing right here over those two wires. Alright, so one final binding point that we're going to do on this. Oops, and my end is coming off there. Let me fix that. One final binding point. We're just going to go right over both of these wires here to connect both of those little swirls. And you just need a few times on that one. And then we will bind off the ends on the back. Okay, so at this point we are basically finished. A few uh, final touches you can do. Um, I usually like to also wrap some 28 gauge wire around each of these layered kind of feather pieces we did. So I would just cut maybe a 10 inch piece, wrap this whole area so I would start here, bind this spot together for starters, and then just wrap it around the base wire all the way up here, go back covering both of these wires, bind it off right where it meets that center swirl, then I would start a new 10 inch piece right here, wrap around all the way up, then go over both of these wires into the center piece, start a new piece here, etc., wrap it up and in, so that I would cover this whole area just wrapping it around with a 28 gauge wire. I think that gives it a little bit more stability, it makes it look more finished. That is optional though, if you're tired at this point of working on this pendant, this would be good enough as is. Of course, you do want to add a bail, and the spot where we would do that is right here, because as you can see, that allows the pendant to hang evenly. Now I do have on my channel a handcrafted wire wrapped bail tutorial that works very well for this. I frequently use that one. So I will leave a little link where you can check that out if you're interested. I will also frequently use these very simple and classy looking bales from RioGrande.com. Um, just a really easy, simple bale that goes with anything. So you can just open it up and again put it on this wire right below that binding portion. And then you can hang this from your own chain. So that is my wire wrapped hummingbird design all completed. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, found it helpful and easy to follow. Please let me know in the comment section below if you ran into any trouble making this. And also let me know what your favorite kind of bird is. I just think hummingbirds are super cute and they always make me think of spring. If you did enjoy this video, please press that like button and make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. And it would also mean a lot if you would click that little notification bell. Um, otherwise, even though you're subscribed, YouTube unfortunately doesn't always tell you when I post new videos, so you might miss seeing those. Um, but if you click that notification, you'll just get an email from YouTube letting you know when I've posted a new tutorial. I do have lots more tutorials planned. The next one is going to be a wire wrapped anchor design, which I did receive several requests for, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, thank you guys so much for watching, and happy crafting!